Hi guys, very welcome to this episode of City Ripple. Uh, I thought I'd show you quickly how to make biltong. So biltong is a dried meat, it's a South African delicacy. And people often say it's similar to jerky that you find in America. But there are a couple of key differences. The first one in that is that Biltong is not cooked beforehand. It is, it's pickled for about 12 hours in a vinegar mix, which I'll show you, and then air dried. So it's also, it's also cut a little bit thicker than jerky, uh, which means you have a bit more of a juicy meat flavor as opposed to just a dry leathery parchment. Um, it, is, it is really nice. So Biltong, yeah, well, Biltong comes from South Africa, as I said. So in the middle of the 17th century, the first Europeans pitched up in, in Cape Town, or the Cape of Good Hope. And it was supposed to be a, a farm, uh, for the lack of a better word, until they discovered diamonds and gold 200 years later. But as you know, anyone that's been to South Africa, the climate is a little bit warmer than in, the, in Europe. So people, uh, the settlers there needed to figure out how to preserve and cure food pretty quickly to, to be able to survive comfortably. And that is where Boltrong is from. It's, it's a dried meat um, and it, it holds for a very long time as long as it has air circulating around it and really delicious and also nutritious. So I thought I'll break this video down into three bits or three parts. The first being how to choose and cut your, your meat. The second, the curing of the meat. And the third would be the hanging of the meat. I didn't get into the detail of making the box. I might make a separate video about that. It's a bit detailed. But uh, for now, I'll just go through the actual making of it. The first section is on choosing the meat and how to cut it. So before we do that, there are two reasons why I make my own bolton whilst living in the UK. The one is... It is expensive to buy. It's about 35 pounds and upwards per kilogram online. And the other reason is that commercially prepared biltong, because of health and safety, the producers will always earn a safe side of caution and dry it out way more than I think is necessary. So I asked someone the other day, like, do they like biltong? And they said, no, it's chewy and it's leathery. It just doesn't doesn't taste it well, which means it's the biltong they had was way too dry. Okay, so for me, I guess if I describe the consistency, it is dry on the outside, about two or three millimeters of, of dry meat, and then the inside should be a little bit tougher than licorice, but still soft and easy to eat. That is the that is the perfect consistency. So to get that, I I dry it for. About three and a half to four days. Other people will dry it six days. Um, yeah, but but you can you can obviously wait until it's the the right consistency for your palate. Let's quickly look at the meat that I decided to to use. It's easiest. The easiest meat to get is beef, uh, top side or silver side. Silver silver side. That is what they sell in supermarkets. You don't have to go to a butcher to get it or to Smithfields. Um, it's readily available. This meat, where did I get it? Sainsbury's. So normally it retails for around eight to 10 pounds a kilogram. But if you keep an eye out, I got this for six pounds 50, which is, which is very reasonable. The spice that I use is from a company called Boltong Direct. There are others as well. The reason I chose Biltong Direct is they do a mix without any MSGs, which I mean I'm not I'm not too fussed about about these uh, preservatives with food, but if it's something if I have a choice I'll I'll try to avoid them. You can use the others as well. It's they they all meant to preserve the, the food quite well. Okay, so what other in ingredients? Vinegar. Um, Water, it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. I'll, I'll type out a list of, of ingredients and put it next to it. Let's quickly cut the meat. I can show you how to do that. Um, first thing you need is a sharp knife. As you can see, it's pretty just to sharpen it quickly. I hate that sound. Um, and then I'll quickly prepare the surface so, so I can cut these. 
So one thing to mention before I start cutting the meat uh, is that in general when preserving anything you need to take care of hygiene. Your knife, your cutting board, your hands, the glass, everything, the surfaces. Just wipe it down with the antiseptic beforehand and make sure everything is sparkling clean. Uh, you don't want any... Because this thing is going to be, be hanging outside for, for a week. Any germs or bacteria that, that get onto it uh, potentially will multiply and, and spoil the meat, which is definitely not something that you want. You don't have to be paranoid about it, but if you just make sure that you give any, everything wiped down before you start working with, with the meat. Just to show you a bit closer. Um, I have just rinsed the meat under running water very quickly just to get rid of any excess blood and then patted it dry. Reason being it's just less messy and less the stuff to go onto the, onto the working surfaces. Remove the sock that it came in and then if you look at the meat <clears throat> so it has a fatty side trimmed enough I'm not going to trim any more of it off Biltong is nice with a little bit of fat on and the grain of the meat runs like that I want a piece of fat on each piece of Biltong so I'm trying to cut it as consistently as possible about three quarters of an inch thick um, from there going across just taking my time and that way hopefully I will get a nice piece of fat on the side of each piece of bottom. So the first cut is always the most difficult you definitely want to make sure you've got a sharp knife um, because part of the reason I guess of doing anything yourself is to enjoy it and hacking at a piece of meat with a blunt knife you know, like a like a first time serial killer is just going to annoy you and it's not going to be fun it might put you off in doing it again in future so make sure you've got a nice sharp knife as you can see I just work my way through about a, a centimeter thick I can go a little bit thicker um, yeah, that's fine just the guideline. You don't have to. I think a lot of people put off trying to to cure food and to preserve food because they're afraid it will spoil. But red meat is, as long as you're conscientious about the hygiene at the beginning, is really forgiving. You're not going to. It's not going to go off that easily. So just enjoy it and work your way through through preparing it really it's really rewarding I'll cut this in two just two nice slices don't worry about getting it perfectly I mean meat it doesn't come square does it it comes in round bits and to see what what works this is a bit of a tough piece. Just cut it carefully. The last piece is always the most awkward because it's odd shaped. And when you do get a piece with a bit too much fat on like that is you can just cut a little bit off of that. Because if something is going to spoil, it's going to be the fat, and you don't want that. So just cut off. Yeah, that's the only bit. I'll start to marinate the meat. We've got the meat all there. Clean glass bowl, vinegar and water mix, about two parts to one, vinegar to water, and the spices. So the first thing you want to do is get a piece of meat and just going to dip it into the into the vinegar let it drip dry a bit oh you want to start off actually some spices in the bottom 
and then you simply need to place it in there. Now you don't need to put it on both of the big sides, but you want it like that. And turn it around. Just make sure it's consistently covered with spices. It's very important to make sure the spices get into all the nooks and crannies. Just again, take your time and work through it. Don't worry about using too much of the spice mix. The saltiness of biltong is more determined by how long you let it marinate for in the fridge overnight than it is about uh, the actual amount of spice you put on. Just want to make sure the meat is covered. And the sides are covered. Both the vinegar and the salt and the preservatives will make sure it's it's safe to eat. You can rub it on, sprinkle it on, whatever works. So this is what the biltong looks like ready to go into the fridge. It's been dipped into vinegar and then layered with the biltong spice into clean glass bowls. Uh, I'll put it in the fridge for 12 hours. Anything longer will go a little bit too salty, so you would try to, to limit it to the 12 hour curing time. Once this is, I'll show you tomorrow morning. So once this is done, I'll then, um, yeah, I'll show you how I hang it in the, in the box. So now I'll make, the, make sure that the bolton box is completely clean and sterilized, ready for tomorrow morning when I'll be, be hanging the bolton. Morning guys, as you can see, it's still um, it's ungodly hour of the morning, it's, it's half past six. Uh, it's about 12 hours after I marinated the meat and I'll show you how I'm going to hang it. So just, if people want, I can, I can make a video about making the box, but just very briefly. It's a plastic container and at the bottom I've got two light bulbs in to give it a little bit of heat. And at the front and at the back, Insulation, insulation holes so it can draw the air in through these two computer fans that I've, that I've mounted at the top and offset from each other just dowels on which I can, can hang, hang the meat so let's just go ahead and open this so I sterilized all of this last night so it's completely clean and now I'm ready to to hang the meat. So here I just I brought up a little bit of spice again. So if I see bits of meat that I think might need a bit more spice, I'll quickly just dip it in there to uh, to make sure it got uh, equal coverage. Metal hooks bought them on on eBay. Um, fairly easy to get, very cheap. You can also use plastic ones. It doesn't doesn't really matter. So I'll start with the uh, the biggest pieces and you hang it with the thicker side towards the bottom. Nice. Like that. So I try to hang the bigger parts at the bottom and the smaller parts at the top just because that's the way that the, the dowels are set up. Uh, I try to do it consistently across the box. I do one on the one side and a couple on the others, just working way through. I have hung all the meat. The box is the perfect size for, for seven kilograms of meat. I can probably squeeze in one more kilogram, but it it, it, it works well. This is this is the right the right size for for seven kilos. This is what it looks like inside the box. You can see the dowels are just offset so that they don't hang on top of each other. And I've taken care for the meat not to touch the sides or or each other just so that the, the airflow is, is consistent all the way around and I'll simply replace the lid make sure it's tight and 
and switch on the lights and the, the fan. So if you listen carefully, you will, you will hear the fans. It's just a circulate there. And um, I'll be checking on it every day uh, just to make sure that they haven't shifted and touched each other. But I'll be taking it out in about, I'll start tasting in about three and a half days by taking out the smaller pieces in four days and the bigger pieces in five. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Share online, do all the likes and all the things that people do. Um, see you next time.